Anybody in this room about to see J&J &J for the first time? <laughs> Exciting. <laughs> first time. First timers. They've never seen it. Well, they're, they're, you're going to have to stand up the back. They're tiny little guys. They're, they're, they're barely visible over the speaker. So in the back, you're going to have to... Like, ladies and gentlemen, Jared and Jensen, here they are. Pick them up in the chair. Oh, you little rascal. All right, well, here's the deal. They're not going to come out on stage. They're timid little guys, and they don't want to come out on stage. They feel like the audience is, is at a fever pitch. You know, the audience has the energy pouring from every cell of their being. So I need you to get that energy up, and I'm going to do it by making this band play a little rock and roll, boys. Give me some. Yeah, like that. We had this whole thing in place uh, where the boys were going to do a little rock and roll music and then Jared Jensen would come down from the work they were doing and it was going to time out perfectly. And, but I, I, I worked in all these cushions in case it didn't. You know, we had these like, well, if, if that doesn't happen, then this will do and you know, we'll do this. It's like you know us. I, it's like we've worked together before. Never, never. I, I overplanned. I was so ready for any, any situation. I walked off the stage, they were literally at the bottom of the stairs. I'm like, crap! <laughs> I didn't know you'd be so on time and stuff. Well, meanwhile, we're sitting there at the bottom of the stairs, and, and he's like, when Jared and Jensen come out, and we're like, we're just, oh, I guess he's just like, what is he talking about? Like, we're like, <laughs> I was killing time! I was, I was doing the thing that I do when I... Same thing you do when you direct. Yeah. Uh, ha, 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 ha. Okay. You know, uh, you know what, gentlemen, I'm going to get on the stage, but I'm going to make it officially official. Jacksonville, help us celebrate this last convention of 2018 by welcoming Mr. Jensen Knuckles and Jared Powell. Good was the worst part. <laughs> yeah, that introduction, I think, was probably the worst part. Okay. Stretching it out, just milking it, just overshooting it. It's 18 takes. <laughs> He's not here to defend himself. Uh, thank y'all for bringing us back. How are we doing, Florida? <laughs> thank y'all very much for bringing us back. We, uh, my thoughts exactly. Um, we, we are uh, right almost halfway between the first and the end of episode 13, also known as episode 300. So tomorrow is day four, and we finish up on Friday, um, but there's nowhere else we'd rather be to kind of co-celebrate whilst shooting uh, than here with our SBM family, so thanks a bunch for bringing us down here.
tried to bring some sun, but there was no sun where we came. Ah, there's a little sun out there right so, now. Actually, yeah, yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we uh, we came from the rain, so I, I feel like we kind of maybe have brought the rain. Did you bless the rain? <laughs> bless the rain. Uh, we didn't bless the rain. We blessed. <laughs> bless the rain is down in Jacksonville. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Look, it's funny. All right, it's good material. Give me the elbows. Yeah. Um, well, I hope everybody's had a good weekend, um, and, uh, and and we're excited to be here, like Jared said. Uh, all right, calm down. This isn't. I'm not opening it up yet. And I'll have whatever that person's having, please. Make it two, please. Um, well, let's get going here. Let's do this. Let's do it. Let's do um, this mess. You want to go over there? Yeah. Let's go over here. That's we should bring. Why don't we start over here? No, you want to start over there? We can no. go start over there. Okay, fine. Let's start over Let's just go over here. Dude, that's like fine. We did it, I think we did it over there last time. So we should probably go back over here. Five here. Five. 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 We can say one or your psychic characters. <laughs> Who's this? I'm not, <laughs> I'm not hearing too good. Uh, you have to uh, If I could say one thing to my character, I think I would probably tell him to stay in the bunker. Um, just to increase the Wi-Fi signal. You know what I'm saying? And, um, there are scary things out there, so just take it easy. You have a cool little, you know, Chernobyl-style bunker. Make the most of it. Decorate a little bit. You know, a little bit of flair. Some posters. Um, uh, the what? Girl Digest. Architectural Digest. Busty Asian beauties. Better homes and gardens. <laughs> um, well, we, we talked about this a little bit this morning in the gold panel, but uh, I, I, would, I would probably tell Dean about the um, filling a hula hoop with salt. And you could just kind of cruise your way right through any situation. Uh, I would also tell him... Shut up! Do the dance! Do the dance! Use your imagination. Uh, I would also tell Dean... I don't need you to use your imagination. Yes. Or your psychic character to use your imagination. <laughs> um, I would also tell Dean uh, to um, maybe maybe oil the doors on the Impala. <laughs> it's about time. <laughs> we get it, there's some nostalgic like aspect to it, but you know. Oil the freaking doors. <laughs> you waking up the neighbors. What would you tell them? Gosh, I'm asking this question for my daughter. Yeah. <laughs> Whiskey business. Oh, oh, Whiskey business from today, this morning, you guys. Oh, oh got it. Perfect. Perfect. Well, thank Whiskey you. Suspenders, Whiskey business. Thank you, guys. All right. Thanks a bunch. Thanks, daughter. Whiskey business. Um, <laughs> I wasn't ready. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> no, I wasn't ready. I think I think I was okay, like, Okay, Jones. <laughs> Is there a doctor in the house? <laughs> Dr. Sexy. Teddy bear doctors don't count. <laughs> so my question was, what was your favorite Christmas movie? I can't talk, oh my god. <laughs> what was your favorite Christmas movie as a kid? <laughs> As a kid, it was uh, Home Alone. Uh, as a kid, it was Die Hard. Look at that, you did great. Thank you. Thanks a bunch, thanks for your question. Hi. Hi. Um, this question is for Jared. Um, I, I, believe found him. I believe it was in season two. Um, and I believe you were filming in the cemetery. And um, as you were leaving, you said, I think she broke my hand, and the next episode you're wearing a cast. 
So I was wondering how you both had more of a pump in that episode. So I actually broke my hand in episode two. There was a scene where I get hit on the back of the head with a telephone. And I walk into a, I walk into a motel room and I walk this way and I sense something behind me. And so I turn and there's a vampire and I punch the vampire, but another one has come up behind me with a, with a I'm, I'm leaking, uh, with a telephone and smacks me in the back of the head. And so I'm like, I'm shitting. Uh, so as I fell, they're holding the camera there, and I, I fell, and I, I acted like I was passed out. The last second, I kind of put my hand out to the side to catch myself, um, in order to, it was August 14th, in order to, it was my friend's birthday. Uh, and so to catch myself, because the stuntman who I had just knocked out, was the knockdown was there in front of me, so I put my hand out to catch myself, but the angle was incorrect, and so I snapped my wrist bone, and I got up and I was and Bob Singer was directing. Um, I think it was episode two, it could have been episode three. Bloodlust? Blood it, it was one of the vampire episodes in season two. Anyways, I'm kind of like, oh man. <clears throat> and for whatever reason, we went one more time, this time I didn't fall on my hand, and we uh, cut, it was the last shot of the day. And my hand was just hurting, like it just really, it kind of hurt to make a fist, hurt to wash my hands. And so a couple days later, I was like, my hand is still hurting, man. Like, it, I think it's bruised. Anyways, I went and got an x-ray, and it was broken. My wrist was broken. Um, but we had already started shooting the episode. Uh, actually, the scene in the cemetery where my pants were, it was already broken because I'd gotten an x-ray, but they couldn't put the cast on during that episode, so we had to wait until the following episode to get, it, to get surgery on it. I still have some cool scars. Um, but yeah, so I guess that, that entire episode, my, my hand is broken, my wrist. Um, I want to go back and watch now and see. You can see, as a matter of fact, there's a scene where we get into the Impala, and he's in the driver's seat, and I get in, and I reach across with my left hand to close the door, as opposed to just doing this. It's because my hand was hurting so bad, badly. Um, so, yeah. Fun fact. <laughs> Fun behind the scenes. We, we, Will we, you just sit down? I'm not going to break anything. Yes. You're making me nervous, man. Good. Thank you for your question. Say again? That's when I was, was, was for sure that you have a friend because when you had the power, you would use your left hand. Mm -hmm. That's all really that was kind of Yeah, you're saying I look like a weird, strange dude, right? That, I am a weird, strange dude. I'm just kidding. Thank you. Great observation. Hi. <laughs> right. I do that all the time to all my friends and it pisses them off so much. <laughs> like, it's not fair! I don't have memes of myself on my phone that I can send. Often it's the black and white one of this. <laughs> I wish we got residuals for that. Because <laughs> that's right. Anyway, sorry. Um, and then, so I was wondering if you had like a favorite meme? I, see, my psychic, my psychic character. That's why I would ask my psychic character. Yes, um, yes, there's, there's that one, the black This is one. mine. <laughs> and now you know why. <laughs> I don't know how you and your friends are to each other uh, on texts. Um, my friends and I are, are very mean to each other. So I also will often use, if I don't use the shot, like what did you just say to me? I'll use Sam like crying profusely in the heart episode, or Dean also crying, so it's just like, oh, you hurt my feelings in some epic cry face. Uh, and there's another one that's really creepy, and it's of me kind of doing like a... White, I think it was Soulless Sam in a white button-down shirt, and it's it, like it kind of makes my skin crawl a little bit. Um, and so I, I pass it along. Uh, I send it to Jen a lot. She doesn't like it. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, those are the ones that I send. Mr. Rackles. There. <clears throat> so I have this uh, this text thread that uh, has been going for um, over five years. 
with uh, five of, of, of my friends that I've, I've known, some I've known since I was 12 years old. Um, Jason Bands is one of them. Uh, and we all, we all had our first child within a year of each other. So every Friday, we call it Father Friday, we send, we put a picture of our kid or kids now. Uh, and since multiply. They, well, yeah, they have. Because I think we all now have multiple children. Uh, but we will uh, text a picture of our kids uh, to these five other friends of ours. And we call it, you know, Father Friday. Um, on that text thread, there's other conversations that happen as well. Um, and I have used myself to meme several conversations. <laughs> and one time I, I did, uh, it was a meme of, of Ryan Reynolds going like this. <laughs> and I, I, I said that, and then immediately they were like, oh wow, I'm, I'm really shocked that you didn't find one of yourself to send. That's awesome. Look guys, he's growing up. And immediately I sent me going like this. <laughs> And it was so perfect. I'm still proud of that today. You should be. I, should I be. am. What are your favorite supernatural memes to send? What was that? <laughs> Basically the same question. What, do you send any supernatural memes to your friends? It is hard to hear. Oh, it's like, no. I thought this was a oh. Gotham convention. I don't... <laughs> um, it's Jensen mostly. <laughs> which which one? I have like a whole folder. Oh, good, good. Do you think it would be folder? There's like a lot of you and Jared and Misha. A lot of Misha. <laughs> you just make She's basically things. saying you need to be more expressive <laughs> and make stupid faces. <laughs> like this one. <laughs> Um, awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you. I'm glad we could help you with your bean game. <laughs>
on the show, do the writers let y'all have some input in the story or the scene, or let you improv and like, I really want it to go this way, not that way. How much say do you have in some of the things that happen? Well, we're we're uh, we're a lot bigger than the writers are. <laughs> <laughs> so, do the writers let us, or do we just do it anyways? I think it's probably the um, we, we have a really great relationship with our writers, and it's been such a long time. And by and large, we've, we've played Sam and Dean longer than the writers have written Sam and Dean. So they trust us, and we, we trust them, and they trust us. So it's, it's, a, it's a pretty unique, neat relationship that I think only happens when you've done 299 and counting episodes of a TV show. And so, yeah. We also don't. We also don't waste their time. You know, if there's a line in the script where Dean says, "Hey, uh, where are you going, Sammy?" and I say, "I am going to the store," and I decide to say, "I'm going to the store," I'm not going to call the writers and be like, "Hey," instead of "I am," can I say "I'm"? You know, so um, contractions are allowed. Uh, so we we uh, we stick with what we think is really pertinent or crucial to our characters and or to the storyline at large. Um, but we're not in a position too often where we need to make a phone call. Yeah, I'd say he's being modest, and, uh, you know, about I'm and I am. But uh, <laughs> truthfully, he, they, I think they have given us a liberty to uh, uh, to kind of massage the, the dialogue uh, if we think we need to in order to enhance the scene or to, to better, uh, you know, to keep it within character uh, to some degree. And, and they trust us to make those decisions on the day if need be. If it's a major story point, um, or it's it's something that is uh, that needs discussion, then then we'll call down and we'll have a, a you know a, a meeting in the minds about it. And usually, come to a very quick decision, um, and they they do trust us in in that capacity to to help make those decisions. Um, they take they take our notes, uh, we take their explanations, and it's a that's a really uh, it's a great relationship, and it has been ever since the get-go. I mean, Kripke really kind of set up a, um, a community between the, the, the writers, the producers, and directors, and the actors, and, and everybody's working to uh, to make the best show that we can, and I think that that's one of the great things about our set, is the best idea wins. Uh, whether it's from the writer, or the director, or the actor, or our on-set carpenter. Um, and to be honest, we've all worked together so long that those guys do have suggestions. You know, I, I in fact, Dave, our onset car, came up to me the other day, and he was like, "Man, that could be really cool if when you said this line, you walked over and picked this thing up." And I just, I'm, I'm just throwing it out there, and I did it. It was a great idea because he's the guy who's watched the show all, you know, for for many, many years, and he's got investment into these characters and into the storyline. So, to have a, a crew that we have uh, that isn't just punching a clock. Everybody's there to make the best show that we can from the top down, and so uh, so there's a really cool relationship, uh, not just with the actors and the writers, but with the with the whole crew, the whole company. And it's also nice because sometimes there'll be um, there'll be just uh, logistical uh, problems. You know, it's Sam and Dean walking over the other day. We we're doing a scene. It was in a hospital, and the scene it's written where Sam does something to one of the machines in the hospital, but the way the scene was blocked out. Dean was closer to the machine, so it made sense for him to do it instead of Sam. So we were like, all right, well, let's change it. Why would Sam walk all the way over there to, to check something uh, when Dean would just do it? So we even just, you know, like if I, I walk in, and if I was the first one that made sense for me to enter a room, yeah. but he had the first line, and the, and the line was, you know, where did they go? He'll just be like, you just take that. But got it. So then, you know, and that's not something that we can call down to Los Angeles and bother these guys who are really thinking on a larger scale of what the show needs to be. Those are just the little, the, the minutia that, that we kind of handle on a day-to-day -day basis, and they trust us to do that. Everything runs smoothly. Yeah. Very cool. Thanks so much for your question. the show even better. Catch me later for the end. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much. Hi. Hi. Oh, so my question to you guys is, how would you think the plot of the show would have been affected if John would have died in the fire instead of Mary? I don't think it would have changed much. Because um, you look at Mary and you look at her past, she's, she's a badass. 
She's, she was also a hunter, so if something supernatural happened to John, she would have probably gone on the same wagon that John did and gone on a massive revenge, uh, uh, or yeah, to, 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 to catch revenge, and her she would have dragged her boys with her. And I, I think that that's, uh, I, I could definitely see that happening. I mean, I'm sure there may have been some, some differences in how she would have gone about it, but um, yeah, I don't know that it would be much different. And she would have, of course, sacrificed herself for her for her sons, just like the way that John did. Yeah, we've seen. I her, think. Now, yeah, now that we have a new mom, um, <laughs> we've seen her do that, make sacrifices for the greater good and for hunting and for her boys. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think Sam maybe would have had a different experience because he he left his he lost his mom and left his dad. I think he probably <clears throat> lose his dad and. and Maybe not, I mean, who knows? Maybe not leave his mom, unless she went way into the hunting world, which, as Jensen said, she probably would, since she was the hunter in the first place. Um, and I'm sure Sam, knowing that, you know, Mary made a deal um, that affected Yellow Eyes and him as a baby, Sam probably would have had a grudge against her. Sam likes grudges against his parents. <laughs> so, um, I mean, you give him a parent or a grandparent, he'll find something to, to be mad at them for. Um, <laughs> but I think it still would have been a pretty, uh, Interesting story to watch. Maybe we'll see. Maybe there'll be an alternate universe where we can see it. It's a great idea. Great question. Shh. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Thank you. Thanks a lot. It's a great question. Thanks. Santi. OU Santi. The OU Santi. Sorry. Boomer Jerry. It's all right. It's all right. Sorry. Patty, I'm Cass. Um, I just have a question about like recent like, oh god, who made me a parent? How am I responsible for this tiny human sort of thing? Like, I drive in Houston every day, so I accidentally taught my toddler some colorful language, which uh, she says at completely inappropriate times. You so, drive in Houston? Yeah, I kind of don't have a choice. It's, it's okay. <laughs> So I was wondering if there's any recent parenting fails where we were like, oh shit, like I can't believe that just happened. <laughs> Yeah, this wasn't really a, yeah, I guess we can call this a fail. Um, Jen and I, we wanted to kind of make the, the house festive and the boys were begging. We traveled so much, the boys were like, can we stay in Austin for Christmas? And of course, like, you know what, let's try and make it a cool festive. And we like lights and we decided to put some trees uh, in the boys' rooms. You know, little small trees, but like have them, they both did ornaments at their schools. And it's like, cool, this will be a meet. And then before Christmas, we'll all get together and put up a big tree downstairs. Um, but, uh, this is an accidental fail. Uh, so, Chef, uh, who I call Drunk Jared, um, <laughs> he'll be five in a week, uh, but he's, he's a pretty curious little kid, and they were, I guess they were kind of misbehaving a little bit, so Genevieve was like, Tom, Chef, go to your rooms, um, you just both need to kind of take some time, so go to your rooms, read a book, whatever, and about 15 minutes later, um, Tom starts yelling, Mom! Mom! And so Jen kind of goes up and she's like, yes. Uh, and they've all been sick. And Tom goes, uh, Chef, he figured out a way to make the lights shock him. <laughs> so, <laughs> Chef had unplugged the lights and unscrewed them and then plugged it back in and touched the part. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Funny but not funny. Uh, <laughs> And so Jen calls me, and it's another one of these, uh, another yeah. one of these moments where Jen calls, and I'm like, hey! And I see her face like, hey, hey, hey. She's like, I need you to talk to Chef. I was like, what's going on? She's like, well, he almost tried to kill himself in front of the house. Now. <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, tell me some more info so I know what's going on. So I, I shift it on FaceTime. I'm like, hey, buddy, what happened? I'm like, um, the lights got unplugged. Like, okay, what, what else happened? Um, and Jen's like, you're not gonna get in trouble, just tell your dad. He's like, well, I turned them in a circle. Like, you turned the, you turned the lights in a circle? He's like, yeah, and then they came off. And when you touch it, it makes you feel funny. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's sort of an accidental fail, but um, you gotta be on your toes with these little guys. <laughs> uh, when our deck gets bigger. <laughs> Trust me, you'll be fine. Um, I, uh, I was uh, recently one of the parents chaperoning a field trip for my daughter's kindergarten class. And uh, I was the only dad. Uh, <laughs> and, which was fine, because there was, I think there was like four moms and then 
and then me and, and the teachers. And so I was basically just the pack mule. Like they'd load me up with the cooler and all the snacks and the backpacks and the jackets and I'm just, you know, which is fine. Um, but uh, at a certain point they were like doing some like arts and crafts or something. This was out at a farm. And, uh, and I noticed that, uh, you know, JJ was trying to, to get to the front where she could hear the counselor lady explain what was going to happen. And one of the little boys uh, shoved her because uh, she kind of came up next to him and he just turns and goes, boom! And then she turns around and like shoves him back and nobody sees this but me. And shoves him back and then, and then he's like about to, you know, picks it, yeah, it's about to escalate. And so I just kind of grab his arm and I just kind of move him over here. I wanted to do more. Uh, <laughs> And I diffused it very quickly before anybody really even saw it. Um, and then because I did that, he kind of got upset and went over to his mom, who happened to be there as well. Didn't say anything, was just like upset. And mom was like, what's wrong, what's wrong? And he was just like, no. Nope. <laughs> so I was like, a little punk. Uh, and that wasn't necessarily the fail. The fail came later when um, we were going over to the uh, goat. And, and these goats had horns. And it said very clearly on the, on the gate to stay back from the fence because the horns can get through and can get you. Um, get you. So I walked, I walked a few of them over there to supervise. And here comes a little buddy. Why don't you go see if one can come over to you? And one started to, to <laughs> kind of motor over to him, and he was right against the fence, and I was literally just holding the other, like, four kids back. And I'm like, I'm like, shh. Just let it happen. I will say, though, that before the goat got too close, I reached over and I grabbed the back of the I grabbed the guy in his car, pulled him back, and I was like, no, 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 let's go, come on back. But it was, it was an attempted fail. I gotta be careful, I gotta, I gotta curb that, because I know I'm gonna be put in that situation a lot with three kids. So. But this is the way he pulled the kid back. Right as the goat was getting close, he's like, ah, oh, all right. <clears throat> I was saving him, I had to save him from the goat. I had to save him from the goat. The goat was gonna get him. Back up, kid, back up. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's, that's good parenting. Anyway, I think that's good parenting. Well, I had a moment at the trailers, at the food trailers. <laughs> okay, I'll tell it. Uh, thank you so much. Bye. Hi. Uh, what's your favorite special effect or practical effect to film? Ooh. <clears throat> I like shooting guns. <laughs> That's not really special effects uh, or, or practical. I mean, doing something logistical. Um, um, I recently uh, learned, I had to learn something oh, yeah. that I was going to be doing on camera um, that I had never done before. And that was kind of cool, so I got to go into the special effects truck. They set up a station, and I got taught how to weld. Um, and not just weld, and I got to the uh, like I got to cut angle iron and uh, cheap metal, and I was using the, the cutting torch. Um, that's really fun. <laughs> Sparks flying everywhere. Um, so anyway, the reason I had to learn how to do that, I'm not going to tell you. I do like I do like the um, angel special effects when wings can reveal themselves. And the light. Um, enjoy that. One, uh, this is one that I don't like. I like the end result when it's on when you see it uh, on the episode, but filming it, it it's so weird. And that is um, 
beheading a vampire. Oh, it's because like this is what it looks like. If I'm the vampire, and Sam, for this reenactment, he'll, he'll play the part of Sam. <laughs> Don't touch me, Dean. <laughs> I'm like, either your hair is on your chin, or that's the longest whisker I've ever seen in my life. Um, so, I would be the bad guy, he would step in with machete and stop, I would step out, Jared would overlap that action and try to swing through the exact spot. Now that's kind of difficult. Because it's also, the blade is, you have to get at the exact The angle of the blade, yeah. So if this is the way you were, and that, and then Yeah, so then I'd step in again, line up, let him line up, and then I would step out and let him take a free swing. <laughs> then, I would step in, he would step out. I would try to line up my neck, because they'd have a freeze frame, uh, where, right where the blade hit, and then, and then I would collapse. And then, then the, third, the third part, this is the stupidest part, a fake head. Matching the vampire's head. A, a, an actual like dummy head so is, then, is then held by uh, generally Robin, our props, uh, on set props department. To match the exact and then she would, one, yeah, she would try angle to angle of the nose, angle until of the nose, the nose and tilt of the head, and then they would say three, two, one, action, and this is literally what happens to the head. <laughs> and it's a, it's a pretty drawn out process. Like that just took sixty seconds, but it takes. It takes, it takes quite a, yeah, it takes quite a while. It always looks great, but, but yeah. the, doing yeah, again, the end result is fine, but, uh, but getting it done is... is yeah. Especially when they happen in the beginning. And of it's the so anticlimactic. It's like, okay, and pause there, stop, great, one person, you step out, and I'm going to need you to overlap that action. No, uh, that was too low. Uh, uh, angle it. No, no, that wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> no, that... Uh, especially when they're at the beginning of a fight, because you've, you've blocked out this fight, it's going to take all day long, and... Um, and then you get caught up. You want to get some momentum going, uh, so that's kind of a difficult uh, effect, but fun. Yeah. Life is good. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi, I'm Daniela. Um, I was wondering, Jensen, what was it like filming the house tour with Daniel and Jared? Do you think you and Jen would ever consider doing it as well? First, um, filming the house is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was cool. Uh, it was. Uh, an afternoon, um, they came in and we gave a tour, which you know we've done with our friends numerous times. So it was just kind of like giving our friends a a, a quick little tour of the house. Um, we have a lot of fun items in our house that that we've taken time to curate and put up. So there's there's a lot of funny stories that kind of uh, is is integrated into into our home, and um, some people find that boring, others find it interesting. I don't know. But uh, yeah, it was cool, and Architectural Digest was really, uh, they were super professional, and um, yeah, it was a nice time. I really had nothing to do with it, I just kind of showed up and they were like, okay, here's your cameras, and I'm like, what are we doing? What's happening? <laughs> uh, we're gonna give a tour of the house to Architectural Digest. Oh, uh, all right, welcome. <laughs> so, it was, it was cool though, it was fun. Fun to watch. Uh, we. I don't know if we would ever do an in-depth in-depth one, but we kind of show our house anyways. You know, like we'll do um, different shoots for Jen's Instagram, um, or we'll take pictures inside or outside and post them, or little videos here and there. Um, so I don't know. Uh, I guess time will tell, but I, I feel like we kind of already let a little glimpse of our world uh, into the stratosphere. Um, the intro webs. Uh, we'll see. I guess time will tell. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. We've got, we've got, yeah, we have a bunch of stuff. Why didn't you give it to the doll? The doll? The doll? Oh, the scary doll? Uh, yeah, um, it's, it's his favorite. I believe it. No, it's like part of her, it's like her great grandma. That. I, it's there to stay, let's just say that. Uh, but it's not going to stop freaking me out. Hi. Of the skills you've used on the show, like welding, mechanic, picking locks, how many of them do you actually have? 
of the skills we use on the show, how many do we actually use? Yeah, we're actually able to do, like, are you a mechanic? Can you actually pick a lock? That kind of thing. I can't pick a lock. I can do the credit card thing. Shoot a gun. When uh, I can shoot a gun. I can kick a door in. Um, I can knock somebody out. Um, All can, right. uh, I can't I can't get hit by a car. <laughs> I'd like to not test that theory. Uh, I can't weld, but I don't weld on the show. I, I guess I technically have a driver's license. Um, but you don't drive. I can read. I can read, and I can Google some stuff. I mean, I can read real good, real good. Um, I would say, I'd say our weapon skills are 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 pretty good. They're probably not quite as uh, uh, as broad as as the, the Winchesters, but um, we certainly know how to handle the ones that they give us. Uh, and that, that came with proper training. Um, other than that, uh, uh, driving, I, I can drive that car pretty well. Uh, and I can pretend to be somebody I'm not. Which I guess yeah. someone pretends to be somebody he's yeah. not, so I can do that. Yep, um, yeah, I guess I'm, I guess. Thank you for pointing out. I'm sort of um, skillless. <laughs> and I'm realizing that I gotta learn some shit. Stuff. Uh, <laughs> thank you for your question. I can drink like Dean. <laughs> and I, I can eat like Dean. <laughs> so. <laughs> thank you. Hi. Hey there. So I wanted to know. Over the course of 14 seasons, y'all have played a bunch of different characters and also multiple iterations of your own character. Which one was the most fun? Not challenging, not difficult, just fun, and why? Uh, I've often said I like Soul of Sam. Yeah. And I do, but something else um, was brought to my attention in the last couple of weeks. Uh, and maybe I'm gonna have to explain what this is. But I also like playing Gary Sam. Yeah. Uh, that was that was that was fun in a, in a proper sense of the word. Um, so yeah, for those who don't know, it was called what was called one called Swap 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 Swap. Yeah, that was a uh, yeah that was a that was that was truly fun. It was nerve wracking, but it was a uh, it was fun to play. Yeah, there's another one. Oh. Uh, this is one coming up. Stay this tuned. might be a new favorite. Yeah. Yeah. This, yeah, a yeah. new, a new version. Yeah, of Sam. And that's right, guys. Spoiler alert: Sam's gone. <laughs> it's new Sam. Dead Sam. No. <laughs> Recast Sam. <It's> re <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Stay tuned. You'll see. Yeah. There <laughs> um. <laughs> Uh, okay, um, what was it, what was the question? <laughs> Different version, what's been the most fun? Oh, the most fun, um... Demon Dean. I'm gonna have to go with Yellow Fever Dean. Yeah! What about, how do, what about, uh, Jensen Ackles Dean? <laughs> I never played him. You played Jensen Ackles as Dean. But I played Jensen Ackles playing Dean. I played Dean. Played by Jensen Ackles. Jensen Ackles by Dean. Stop it! <laughs> when you really think about it, it was Jensen Ackles playing Dean. It's not. Playing Jensen Ackles playing Dean. <laughs> <laughs> what, was your, what were your favorites? Uh, now that you said that Gary's and that was hilarious. I totally wasn't even thinking about that one. I was yeah. going to go with Soul of Sam. Yeah. And for Dean, I would think Demon Dean. Demon Dean. He, he would definitely be, you know, uh, a, a favorite as well. I just, there's something about the Yellow Fever Dean because he's <laughs> playing a character who, who, you know, really isn't afraid of much at all. 
uh, and plays that up, the fact that no, no, there's not a lot that, that, you know, frightens him to then be frightened by everything. Uh, it was such a, a, a turn that I, I just had a lot of fun with it. That was, it was fun to play. That's my favorite episode, so. Well, That's a funny episode. Good. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. That was scary. <laughs> I, did, I, I found myself laughing during the filming of that one quite a bit. Yeah. yeah, you ruined a lot of really perfectly decent takes. I left one of the scenes. You did. He walked away and he was laughing so hard. And what was the scene? What was the Oh, yeah. Oh, that one. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah, the snake's coming over and I'm like, I'm out of here. <laughs> yeah, I've got a snake the size of a tree trunk crawling across my shoulder and he's six feet away and then gets up and leaves the scene. I really did. They had to change the camera angle so you didn't know that I wasn't there. I was like, nope. I think, it's the, I think it's the only time I've ever done that. Like, nope, I'm not doing this. Uh, I'll see you later. <laughs> I just for some reason uh, uh, caught a bit of uh, maybe a bit of blooper or something. I don't know. Um, but it was when we were doing a scene over the top of the Impala and Phil was directing. And you were laughing so hard on your off camera, and it was an over. And oh, yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't get the words out because he was just like crying. He was laughing so hard, <laughs> but the camera couldn't see him. It would just barely see us. You're like zh, 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 zh. It, something like that, yeah. And, I, and so I was like, I was like, I can't, I can't say these words to him because his face <laughs> is so puckered and it's like <laughs> leaking. And Phil's like, just keep going! And I'm like, I can't! He, are you seeing him? Does he have to be in the scene? It was at Riverview. And, no, it was at the... It was Yellow Fever! It was Yellow Fever! No, no, no. Yes! It was in the junkyard. It was Bobby's junkyard. I don't know. We're both in suits. It's Bobby's junkyard. 100%. And, and so, so I make him turn around. And he does the scene, because now this shoulder's on camera. And you're just catching a little piece of a, and, and, but you see this. <laughs> he's vibrating because he's laughing so hard. And the whole crew is laughing too. That's, it's yellow fever. It's not. It is. It's because you're like, what we're, we're kind of crazy people? No, 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 no. That was a river view. This is a totally different scene. Yeah. You're right about that scene, but that's not the scene I'm talking about. It's all just. A, it's all just. I know. It's look, man. Three hundred episodes. <laughs> God, that one's the better. We Thank we were we're in a uh, we're in a set. We're we're, we're in a location uh, in the three hundredth episode that we're filming right now that we haven't been to since season eight. Uh, and walking through the set last Friday. Uh, it was amazing, like all of these memories come, like, came flooding back and I was like, just walking this little section and I was just like, wow, I remember this vividly, I remember this, I remember this, I remember this, and it was six remember, years uh, ago. Ellen and Joe, the hardware store? Mm -hmm. Do you remember the scene uh, between uh, where Dean essentially tells Benny goodbye? That one. You remember one of my favorite scenes without dialogue in supernatural history, the introduction of death, walking down the street? Yeah. Yeah, yeah there was, there's been a lot of, a lot of great, uh, a lot of great episodes and scenes filmed in that area. The end? The end? Uh-huh. The glimpse into the future of post-apocalyptic? Uh, fight the fairies. In the fight the fairies. So I get loaded into the car and I'm like, you find those fairies! <laughs> yeah. Um, and we haven't been there in six years. And so we go to shoot there and like you said, you get back there, you haven't you have set foot on that, in that place for six years. And it's because it, it, it became really the only place in Vancouver. It was, it's, it's called the back lot. And it's a, it's a film set lot that looks like a, a main street of a town, but it's not. It's just a, it's a facade. And it was really the only place in town, and we started using it immediately. Uh, it actually got built from the movie The Watchmen. 
uh, they had originally built it and then left it, and the people that owned the land just left it up, and all these other productions started going, oh, well, can we use it, can we use it? And so Supernatural ended up using it quite a bit for a number of years, and then big movies started coming up, and and big shows, you know, Netflix shows and Amazon shows, and, uh, and they, they just kind of outbid us, and we weren't able to use it for, for quite a while. Um, but we, uh, we got in there for this, this episode, which is kind of cool. Uh, hi. Uh, hey, you guys are kind of big celebrities now, but you used to be regular people, like us regular people. I mean, I didn't want to say it. <laughs> well, I was just wondering if you've met celebrities on or off the show or out in the wild where you fanboyed over them the way regular people fanboy over you now. Uh, a bunch. Yeah, I, I sort of, uh, yeah, I, I met a few and kind of laughed, expecting, not expecting to react like that. The one that sticks out is Mike McCready, the guitarist for Pearl Jam. Um, we had the, one of the traveling tour managers was a fan of Supernatural. They had a, they had a concert in Vancouver. And so we go, we take Jen and Daniel, and we walk into the green room because we have backstage passes and whatnot. And McCready's standing over there, and I don't realize it, but Jen starts trying to get her hand away from my hand, and she's like, you're hurting my hand. She's like, what's wrong with you? I guess I just started kind of like squeezing her hand, like in a really creepy way, like this is <laughs> He's right there. Uh, that's that's kind of one that sticks out to me. I just had one recently, and I, I don't I I never got confirmation on who I thought it was, <laughs> and I'll tell you why. Uh, so I was. Um, I, <laughs> that's kind of how I sounded. I was in, uh, I, I was in uh, the gym uh, at a hotel uh, and I was working out and it was, it was just me and there was an older gentleman on the, the elliptical thing and then a, a, a woman over on the bike or something and that was it, it was a small gym, pretty empty. And I was sitting there and I, the, the gentleman got off of the elliptical and went over and started doing like cable stuff or whatever. And I looked at him and I was like, no. And I looked down, I looked back up and I was like, oh, okay, all right. All right, what do I do? And for the next like 10 minutes, I didn't work out at all. I was like, oh, maybe I just need to get some water that's over by his station. Drink that quick. <laughs> I don't know why I walk like that in the gym, but I do. Um, and uh, and and I finally realized I'm like, I was like, just ask him, just ask him, just be like, you know, oh, are you playing in town? Or say something. And and I literally couldn't build up the nerve to ask him. And I I was like, well, this is ridiculous because I'm not. I, I'm not working out anymore, like this is a pointless, I'm just stalking this poor gentleman in the gym. And it's a very small gym and I'm sure he's starting to notice it. And so I left. I was like, I, I, this is ridiculous, I'm leaving. I'm just going back to my room. Um, How did you walk out when you left? <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure it was Eric Clapton. Yeah, that would've been amazing. But here's the thing, had I gone up and gotten confirmation that it was, I don't want to know what would have happened next. I don't want to know. I'd rather just play it cool. Which isn't cool at all. Um, probably worse than just going up and, and you know, Freaking out, but anyway, I, I'm pretty sure it was him. Yeah, I, that's funny. Maybe remember, I was at a uh, I was at a restaurant in Sausalito, California, and we walked into a nice Italian restaurant. And at the corner of my eye, I kind of saw 
a guy sitting in the like in the front bar area with big old headphones on, and he was kind of like a computer on his desk, and was sitting there kind of like just swaying to some music. And I'm kind of going like, this doesn't seem like the right place for somebody to come in and just sort of the headphones. So I didn't think much of it. And then I kind of glanced over, like, who is this dude at this nice Italian restaurant who's just like sitting here jamming out? Um, to the music in his head or his headphones. And I look over and I'm like, oh, Carlos Santana, got it. He can do whatever he wants. <laughs> As if he needed my approval or something. <laughs> he can stay, guys. He's with me. Um, yeah, I, I just thought of another one. I, so the apartment that I, that I live in in Vancouver, uh, there, there was a, a movie filming there. Um, some of you may uh, have saw it, I don't know, uh, Deadpool. Um, <laughs> Ryan and Blake, uh, the production had rented them an apartment in my same building. Um, and I never did see Ryan because he was probably on set all the time, or I was on set all the time, whatever. But I did see Blake twice in the elevator, and it was just me and her and her child. And I would, I'd be on and she'd get on. And like, I've met her. I, I've like, taking pictures with her, she was on the same network with us for years. But for some reason, she gets on and I'm just like... <laughs> Don't make eye contact. Don't make eye contact. And she never said anything to me and I never said anything to her. And she's probably you're a weirdo. Probably. Yeah. So, which is just... probably the same thing Eric Clapton thinks now. <laughs> When he first told me the story, it was slightly different. He omitted something. He said, you know, he saw, he heard Ryan and Blake were in the same building, and he never saw Ryan. But when you told me the story, you said you never saw Ryan because the drone wouldn't go as high as its floor, <laughs> or the, the, the blinds were as closed or something. I forget what you. And I'm pretty good at flying that thing now. <laughs> uh, yeah, I had something the other day. I've had, so I've had these things where people can't quite figure out, especially sometimes when I'm bearded or during off season or something. I can tell they're staring at me, but they don't know why. Uh, and finally give up on it. But I, Jen and I were on vacation with the kids over Thanksgiving break. And she's like, hey, let's go have a drink in the bar because we still have a nanny and it's like 6 p.m. or something. And I was like, sweet, alone time because our nanny's watching the kids. And so I enter this like bar restaurant up in Whistler and I'm sort of looking around. I can't see her. And I see her finally. Uh, you know, 50 feet that way, and there are two glasses of red wine, and she's facing the other direction, has on this cool, stylish hat, and like, her little coat. And I walk up, and I'm like, hey baby, <clears throat> sorry, just took me a second to get here. And as I look, it's not my wife. <laughs> so my hand's on her shoulders, I'm about to sit down, and she goes, I don't know you. <laughs> and as I, as I turn around to look, I realized that Jen was like behind a post, and I walked right past Jen to come scratch some lady's shoulders. And I was like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm gonna go sit with my wife. My bad, my bad. And Jen's like sitting there looking at me like, so Was she sitting with anybody? No, she was waiting for somebody, like everything that was Jen's clothes. Oh, uh, it would've been so much better if she was like, oh, wow. <laughs> you look way better than your profile picture. Or worse. <laughs> Gosh, you don't want anything about the robot for sure. You, you put on some weight, I guess. Oh, liars. <laughs> Check, please. Uh, <laughs> mistaken identity. It was pretty embarrassing. But also, what about the guy in the, the, the hotel last night? So, Jared and I go and we check in late last night because we, we flew in. Oh, yeah. Vancouver. <laughs> so, we just go grab a bite to eat at the hotel. And, and as we're, as we're um, kind of walking out, there's a, a, a door guy there. Like a bellman. What, 20? Yeah, young kid, younger looking kid, like nine feet tall. And and we walk we walk up and he's like, hey, you guys, you guys look just like those dudes from Supernatural. <laughs> We're standing next to each other. And he's like, he's like, he saw you first. Yeah, he, he looks at me and he's like, like oh, wait a second. And you look at him. That's crazy. Has anybody ever told you guys you look like those guys from Supernatural? <laughs> and I, I didn't, like, I didn't know, I was, I was like, is it Jeff with us? Are we getting pumped? Because <laughs> yeah. that's happened to me, like, by myself. Like, has anybody ever told you you look like that guy from Supernatural? And, you know, depending on how much of a rush I am, I'll either be like, 
it's me. Yeah, how are you doing? Nice to meet you. Or I'll be like, you know what? I've gotten that a lot of times, and I use it. <laughs> um, but this, I mean, it's like so blatantly obvious. And he's like, and he's like, uh, hey guys, do you have any, I mean, you look just like him. And finally, Jared's like, it's because we are them. And he's like, and he goes, he goes, no way. He's gonna freak out. <laughs> and then he was like, is okay. I think he wanted to ask for a picture, but he was like working That's and there were cameras funny. and he's like, okay, well, man, I mean you guys really look like him. <laughs> Alright, buddy. Thanks, thanks a lot. I've had some where they're like, you look like the guy from Supernatural. And I'm like, he sounds handsome, and they're like, uh, I mean. <laughs> the, the angel, you mean? Uh, yeah, yeah uh, identity, funny thing. Thank you for your question. Anyway. Milestone as a unit. A new low? No, no. <laughs> you know damn well we can't go any lower. <laughs> a new high, because as you came out to do the last question, and the band's doing what they do, and you and Jason are doing what you do, she was mouthing the words. It's now a hit single. She actually knew the words. She, she was literally over here going, Billy Pop Pop I mean, right in time with you guys. I'm like, well, gentlemen, Jensen. we've arrived. Tell Jensen. She goes, I, I did not know it, so. She actually said to me, she goes, Jason's off. <laughs> she did not. She is not wrong. That was awesome. Anyway, Jason Jordan, Yes, uh, SBN family, men and gentlemen, and ladies and girls of the SBN family, please welcome Martha as our last question. Uh, 2018. 2018. Uh, Martha, where are you from? Yes. What is your, what is your question? <laughs> what is your, that was our question. Okay, so. Oh, where is your question? What is, what is you from? Um, I'm from Miami. Okay. Miami. Bienvenido a Miami. I learned that from Will Smith. <laughs> Welcome to Miami. Lo <laughs> siento. I apologize. I already did that. On Espanol. <laughs> Long flight. Um, no, I'll well, we get it. Okay. Um, so, um, first of all, I was actually going to go in the room. She's got the lyrics. Excuse me. I just need you to hold this. Don't use it, just hold it. Maybe not necessarily the whole story line, but just in regards to um, you know you guys that are like behind you. That's a great question. Um, there have been a lot of moments <laughs> so far. 
<laughs> uh, I'll say this. My, this is kind of a strange answer because it hasn't yet happened, but my favorite a moment that I've been looking forward to for a long time, we're going to film in four days. So um, even though I, it hasn't happened, I know it's going to be something that uh, is going to be very, very special. Um, so I'll go with that. Well, you stole mine. So uh, <clears throat> all right, <laughs> I will. Uh, I'll, I'll say another one. Another um, one of my favorite uh, things that we have filmed is a bar fight that will be coming up very soon. Um, there you go. That's, I mean, there's not a whole lot I can say about it without giving too much away. So there's just there's there's a, a fairly epic bar fight that comes, uh, that's coming up. Is it the next? Well, no stream. No, yeah, no spoilers. No, we're not gonna, we won't spoil. No, 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 no. no, no I'm just trying to figure out what episode it is. <laughs> I feel really bad to mess up your hair earlier. Really. Just... <laughs> Mike joke on a ride. And just... He found that outside the parking lot, so I didn't like When Rob's not here, I really freak out, man. Oh, it's stuck. Crap. I'll come. Yeah, that's. Uh, so coming up soon. Unfortunately, both of you haven't seen yet. That's creepy level expert there. That's Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> Catch your breath, look at all the photos you took, and then we'll be back with more panels, more autographs, more photographs. We'll see you guys in a little bit.